Hello Michael here with another How Do I Render tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to do car paint with Render Man. Uh, we're going to be looking at a couple of different techniques here from something simple um, to something a little bit more complex um, other than just a straight color uh, with some specs and some transitional color effects. So the first thing we need to do is we're just going to use a Pixar surface shader um, and apply it to our sphere here. Uh, this sphere does have UVs on it. I just use auto UVs if you want to do the same thing there. That's just so we can use a manifold a little bit later in the tutorial. Um, and auto UVs will do the trick easily. So in the Hypershade editor here, we're just going to rename this so I don't lose it. It's going to be called Car Paint. Okay, so obviously the easiest thing to do with Car Paint would just be to change the color to be red, give it some specular. Um, face color and then render it and you're going to get a somewhat shiny ball that uh, looks like it could be a specular car surface. However, um, we'd also want to be looking at the roughness here. Something below, probably below 0.1 would be good. So you get a nice sharp reflection there from the light. We've got a light up here at the moment. Now if you're wanting to make it look more metallic you could remove the gain from the diffuse channel and change the reflective color to red. And then you get that sort of effect. Tends to look a little bit more aluminium-y, um, but just knowing that might help you a little bit in the future anyway, so I thought I'd just include that. Um, a common car paint style that you'll see is a transitional effect to um, a darker shade of the color or a dark shade when the color when the normal of the surface isn't directly facing you. So in this example, this area here would have the highlight or the highest value of the color and then it would transition out to a darker shade around the edge of it. And we can do this using a Pixar facing ratio. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a Pixar ramp, Pixar ramp. So just hit tab, type in Pixar ramp and we're going to transition this from red to black. Now I should mention this is actually uh, something I learned years ago. I think it was uh, Leif Pedersen has a tutorial on it for Renderman 20 or maybe even 19 I believe it was. Um, that's probably still floating around YouTube so if you want to check that out um, if you're on a much earlier version of Maya though this might be a little bit easier to follow if you're on something more recent than 2016 I believe. So now that we've got this ramp we're going to run the RGB into our diffuse color. And then we're going to grab a Pixar facing ratio. And I've got a tutorial on this for RenderMan 21, and it's basically the same in 22, so you can use that if you want to learn more. Um, we're going to run the result F into the spline map, and that's just going to make it so using the camera, so whenever the camera's looking at the ball, um, the center point is going to have, which is going to be this value here, is going to have the highest value, and it's basically mapping it so. This value here is going to be the facing the camera always, and this value here is going to be facing away as possible. Obviously, camera can only see so much. So if we run that render now, actually I've got it inverted, so what we need to do is go into our ramp and reverse it. And now you'll see that it's transitioning to a darker color on the outside. <coughs> you can control how much you see of that by pushing this black in and then you can see that effect there. So you can use this for a whole bunch of things other than car paint. Um, obviously I'm just going to keep it subtle though so it's just a nice subtle darkening effect on the back. So you can already see without having done much even just that subtle change especially on uh, areas where it's not got the direct light you get some really nice reflections um, happening so just something simple you can do to improve the look. Another thing we can add into our paint is flakes, um, which if you've got like a really sparkly looking car, you might have flakes. So that's just with PXR flakes, we get this. And we're going to run this in to the, using the result N, which is the normal. Um, so it's essentially going to work as our bump map, and we're going to use it for our specular channel. So we're just going to pop it in there and use specular bump normal. And you'll sort of see a, a preview there of what it looks like. If I IPR this now, you should see in the specular reflections, you've got all these little flakes, and obviously you can also see them in the uh, bounce light from the ground. 
um, you will need to adjust the size of your flakes depending on how big or small your object is. Um, obviously they want to be relative. Uh, on a car they'll be quite small. Also bear in mind that they do tend to look like uh, noise sometimes or um, fireflies so just be aware of that. Um, you can take care of obviously noise and stuff uh, in the rendering process but you want to make sure that it doesn't look bad and with these small highlights they do tend to get uh, eliminated by denoising sometimes so the denoise is actually quite good at detecting that this is actually a highlight and not noise uh, but you do lose some smaller pieces of detail with the denoiser just by the way it works so um, expect to see a little bit of that if you are using the denoiser. Um, now the thing about this though is that the the fact that we're using as the specular bump channel kind of means that you don't see any reflection over the top of it so um, couple of things you can do to adjust this. We might just play with the size a little here. So you can obviously change that to be smaller, uh, to have smaller flakes. Uh, you can also increase the octaves. So there's sort of like layers of them. Uh, this can also appear to increase the density as well. Um, you can increase the flake frequency as well. Obviously it does what it expect, you would expect it to do. And the randomness is just a randomness factor. Um, this ends up pushing it away from your specular highlights. So if you want to tighten or loosen that, that can be a good way of doing it. Um, obviously with uh, zero flake randomness it's going to uh, tighten all the flakes up as you can see. Which can still be an interesting effect just depending on what you're going for exactly. Um, so this is with the denoiser on by the way and this is with it off. So um, yeah, so just bearing in mind how large your object is going to be will determine how visible it is. So we're going to just keep our flag randomness at, I think it's 0.3 or maybe it's 0.5 by default, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then flag size, if we usually want to increase the face, uh, flag size or reduce them, you can do it that way and jitter is just sort of um, how tight or sort of how square the, they are um, aligned and how randomly they are aligned across the surface. Now because I've UV'd this, we can also plug a manifold into it, a 2D manifold. So we'll type in manifold and we'll get a PXR manifold 2D. We can run the result into the manifold and then we could say you could do anything with this if you just want to increase the or decrease the size of your flakes even further. Um, I'm just going to increase the uh, UV repeats. So you can see there that it's got a lot denser by a factor of 10 to be precise. So that's an easy way of uh, increasing the density if you want to play with it using a manifold. You could also do something like make them stretchy lines like so. And this is something I hadn't thought of until now but you could probably use this for um, brushed aluminium. I haven't tried it before but that's probably a good way of getting a brushed aluminium look. Um, I wish I'd thought about this before I did the brushed aluminium tutorial I did a few months ago but hey. Um, now you have the opportunity to try it yourself, but it does give a, a nice sort of random brushed look and then you can just obviously tighten up the values with the manifold. So if you wanted to, the, the dots to be closer together or sorry, skinnier, um, you go like 0.01 and then you can make those longer, increase this to like 50. And because these um, lines are actually getting probably a bit narrow, we're kind of losing them in the render. So we might just increase those to say one so we can see it really easily. Yeah, it might need a bit of work, but it could, could be an effective way of doing it. Try, try it out at home and see what you think. Okay, so just at returning that to the way it was, you can adjust the specular um, highlights from your flakes by changing the face color. So we could have a blue specular highlight like that. So if you want to pretend that your flakes have a um, blue tint to them, then you could use that. Um, but the problem will be now that your flakes, or basically all your highlights, or your specular reflection is going to be that purple color. So we can combine our rough specular channel and just not use it as a rough channel. So we can point one that. Um, and then just increase the face color. So now we get a standard specular uh, color over the top of our flake color. 
not 100% easy to see, but you can actually see the overall change in hue here in this bounce uh, reflection here. And um, obviously that specular highlight is a little bit sharper than would be if it was just the flakes. And obviously the overall look of it um, has changed a bit as well. So now it gets a, a little bit more interesting when you apply it to something slightly more interesting than a ball. So I'm just gonna jump into a different file and open up the Porsche. Okay, here is my Porsche 911 930, um, which is a lovely car. Um, and I'll show you the render as it stands. So I worked on this a little bit last night in preparation for this tutorial and I'll show you how I sort of put it all together. And I've got denoising enabled as well so I can bounce between those. But essentially what you can see I've done is I'm using a light blue flake um, and I'm using a blue metallic paint. And I'm also using iridescence and I'll show you that in the material here. So basically what I've done is I've just used the physical mode for iridescence. Um, the artistic mode is good. It works perfectly. I tried it with just a couple of different uh, primary colors, but I found that the physical mode was just a little bit more subtle and I've just increased the gain on that. So we can have a look at how that works with the render. So these are the areas down here, uh, which you'll notice it increase and decrease. So on something like this, I wanted it to be quite subtle, um, otherwise it kind of tends to look a little bit uh, not quite right. Iridescence is the the way that light uh, refracts off something like oil. Uh, if you leave a look at like an oil spot on the road, um, it's got all that sort of um, multi-rainbow color sort of effect to it. So that is um, what we're applying to here. And you can also see that I, um, I'm actually not using the, the diffuse, uh, but I'm using the, uh, I'm doing this kind of a weird way and this doesn't actually matter, but um, you don't need to use this Pixar blend. Um, I'm running the face color off that, that ramp there. So I'm using a blue color rather than the red color that you saw in the previous. And I'm using a low value um, specular and the rough specular. And I'm using a very low uh, roughness on both. So it's a very shiny car. And I was playing with the purple, um, or magenta diffuse, which you can sort of add in, um, but it tends to overtake the the blue metallic color. So I kind of liked it a bit, sort of backed off. You could sort of maybe blend it in very subtly if you wanted to, um, as an option. But it might be getting to be a bit much, you know. And one area that you can really see the difference um, of having the flakes with a um, specular layer over the top of them using something like the roughness uh, the rough specular channel over the top of the regular specular channel which has got that uh, bump normal is you will see these nice sharp specular reflections um, but you'll also see this nice trans transition underneath of the density of the flakes so yeah that sort of started to render up a bit further if you bounce between noise and denoise you can see that these will become less important um, to the denoiser so you do need to play around with it a little bit. You end up needing to uh, render these up at a higher sample rate, but uh, to get them to render cleanly. However, um, you can see that with very sort of little work, you can get a nice car paint look. So that's really all there is to it at this tutorial. I just wanted to give some brief overviews and uh, looks into ways that I painted this particular car um, after modeling it last month. Uh, but yeah, if you liked the tutorial, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed. So I do a couple of these tutorials or I do, do a tutorial every week or so um, for all sorts of things like Render Man and other renderers and um, other 3D software. Uh, if you'd like to see more of my work, check out my Instagram link in the description below. And I believe my art station will be there as well if I remember to put it there. Uh, that's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.